we see a common group meeting scenario. Three colleagues sit around a table with several pads and pens. Typically, this arrangement works very well. Everyone has their own resort, a pad of paper and pen to write and share their ideas upon. It is easy to observe how natural this arrangement is as one person shares information with another with little effort, and how a user can augment another's idea and share it back without disrupting the flow of the meeting. However, when a small group is trying to collaborate around a single form of input, for example on a single pad of paper, several problems arise that cause the group dynamic to be awkward and frustrating. This single entry point to the collective contribution causes two members to always be queuing ideas until they can manage to get a turn with the artifact in question. If one member becomes too engrossed in his or her own ideas, it can be very difficult for the others to contribute. Another common meeting arrangement occurs at the whiteboard. Ordinarily, there is one person at the board who is drawing out a problem while the others are trying to contribute. Again, this person can become engrossed in their own ideas, making it difficult for the others to participate, in which case the other participants may break away and begin working among themselves. Whether it is an interactive or traditional whiteboard, it can be very awkward to seize control from the person operating at the board, and it rarely happens. Another problem with this arrangement is occlusion, where the person at the whiteboard gets in the way of the others observing. This is even more of a problem with several people working at the board together. Becoming more and more familiar is the orientation of a small group working around a single screen such as a laptop or tablet. Again, we have a single entry point in this arrangement, the mouse. As you can see, it's easy for them to observe what's on screen, but it's difficult to take turns interacting with what's on screen because of the awkwardness of exchanging control and handing the mouse from one user to another. Typically, the user in control of the mouse becomes engrossed in the task, leaving the other users without any way to contribute. So how do we deal with these problems? In particular, how do we overcome the frustrations of only having one mouse when interacting with digital information on a screen, or as we saw with the whiteboard, having a one pen? Our research is concerned with designing new technologies that can support groups working together, in particular to try and facilitate more equal participation. We've developed a framework called the Multiple Entry Points um, that is intended to help us inform uh, the design of these new workspaces. What do we mean by a multiple entry point? Well, an entry point is an invitation in the physical or a digital space uh, for anyone to take part. Um, and the way in which we think about um, the design is, is how we can create multiple entry points that um, different people can enter the workspace and take part. This contrasts with what we saw earlier where there's only one single entry point via the mouse or the pen. In order to implement the multiple entry point framework, we examined several technologies and ultimately chose Mitsubishi's prototype called Diamond Touch using the Diamond Spin software package. We used the Diamond Touch tabletop with the Diamond Spin software to implement um, a, a prototype for this task. And as you can see, the images um, that they can select uh, are small icons at the side of the tabletop. And what they do is they, um, simply by using their fingertips, um, can slide these images into the, the middle of the tabletop and allow um, each other to, to look at these and to compare them and to select them and then place them into the slots on the calendar uh, once they've decided which possible options to choose. What we found was uh, that there was um, much more participation from all of the, uh, the group members uh, taking place. In particular, there was a lot of turn taking and what we're calling a turn inviting. And this is where, um, where one member will invite another to, uh, to take part, for example, uh, to uh, comment on an image or to select an image or to place an image. Do you think it's January? All right, I would go with Jan. I would, I would, I would go. But you're thinking December. I'm thinking December, but I'd go with January, not November. Well, what do you have for January and step back? We think that this type of setup, uh, where you have these different entry points, encourages that type of behaviour, which is quite different from what we saw um, in the previous um, setups. We continued off of our finger talk study by extending the workplace out into the surrounding environment and changing the task to designing a public garden. To account for some of the limitations in our previous setup, 
we attached RFID tags to various physical cards in 3D models and placed an antenna next to the shared display. Since we had extended the space into the area around the table, the entire room then became a browsing space. With this setup, the groups could simply glance around the room in order to find the items they needed. Red flower to go underneath it or something like because people tend to be very good at orienting physical objects in general, the users had no problems collecting, sharing, passing, or trading in order to refine their selections with either the cards or the 3D models. So maybe in the garden we can plant this and this together? I don't think these go well with the blue flowers, though. As you can see, everyone in the group is being very active by finding their own way to participate. This arrangement makes the transitions between various jobs fluid and easy so that as one user decides to change roles, it has no negative effect on the others. One of the most interesting findings during the course of these studies was how the workspace implemented for the garden study affected the participation of users who do not contribute a great deal vocally in the design process. As we had assumed, the members contributing the most vocally were doing a fair share of the physical activity. However, the surprising outcome was that the users who spoke the least tended to perform the greatest number of physical actions. Our interpretation of this result is that this physical digital arrangement provides more entry points for users to make contributions and therefore allows various types of users to contribute in the way that they are most comfortable. Our results have shown that there is a strong possibility that providing a space that has multiple entry points for contribution can foster more equitable decision making in small groups. We plan to further this research and determine if a multiple entry point framework can be implemented in such a way as to generalize some of our findings. One of the first steps in doing this will be to continue to extend the workspace and offer more channels for people to participate in ways which make them most comfortable.